What's going on guys? John Alder here from CodingMe.com and in this video, we're going to look at conditional statements in JavaScript. All right, guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to look at conditional statements for JavaScript. But before we get started, if you like this video, want to see more like it, be sure to smash like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodingMe.com where I have dozens of courses with thousands of videos to teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off lifetime memberships, all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee, which is insanely cheap. Okay, in the last video, we looked at comparison operators. In this video, we want to look at conditional statements. And conditional statements allow us to use our comparison operators to make decisions, to create logic, to do different things based on different things. So if this equals this, do something. Otherwise, else, do something else. Super important for all programming, and JavaScript makes them very easy, and that's what we're going to look at in this video. So let's head over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor in the Git Bash Terminal, as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other videos in this JavaScript series, so check that out if you haven't so far. So I've got our basic starter code we've been using, uh, just the same stuff we've had in the last videos. I've renamed it conditional.html. And if we head back over to the website and run this thing, uh, we see it just says conditional statements. My name is John Elder. So head back over here and to create these, like I said, we use our comparison operators. So if you didn't see the last video, go back in the playlist and watch that. We have to understand these comparison operators in order to use conditional statements, but they're super simple. Uh, but check that video out if you need to. So uh, let's come down here and let's create a variable. I'm just going to call this my name. And let's set this equal to John. So now let's create a conditional statement. And these are if else statements. So they always start out with if. And then we use our comparison operator. So let's say if my name equals John, then we use our curly brackets. And then if this is true, we want to do something inside these curly brackets. And let me just copy this uh, stuff we've been doing up until now. And let's just say, hello, John. If we run this, we know that my name is John. So if we're saying, hey, if it's John, print out hello John to the screen. So we would expect if we come back and hit reload, it says hello John. So that makes sense. What happens if this is Bill? Well, it's going to say, hey, is my name John? Well, no, it's Bill. So as soon as this becomes false, this whole thing just sort of stops running. It doesn't get executed. So whatever's in these curly brackets doesn't get executed if this is not true. Let's go ahead and save this and run it. And when you hit reload, it says my name is John Elder. Why does it say that? Because that's what it originally says up here. And we're only changing that that line right here if this is true. Now that's the if statement, super easy. Usually when you use conditional statements, you'll use an if with an else statement. And to use an else statement, we just type else right here, set another set of curly brackets, and then do something else, whatever you want to do. So in this case, let's say, uh, I don't know, your name is not John, right? Ah, so we know our name is Bill. So this will say, hey, is my name John? No, it's not. So it will skip this entire set of brackets. And the program flow will skip down to the next line, which is this else statement. And then it will execute whatever's in these brackets. So if we save this, head back over here, hit reload, it says your name is not John. Or we could get real cute here. We could say instead, hello, and then let's just put our variable and we need a plus sign. There we go. So if we save this, head back over here and run it again, it says, hello, Bill. We've got some logic going on here. We were able to make decisions and do different things based on whatever logic we've set up. So if we change this back to John and hit reload, then it says, hello, John. Why? Well, let's change this to hello there, John, <laughs> right? So that you know, we could differentiate between these two. If we save this, head back over here, of course, now it says, hello there, John. Why? It says, hey, is my name equal to John? Well, yes, it is. So it executes whatever is in between these two brackets, which is, of course, printing out, hello there, John. And then the whole statement stops. It does not continue down and do this else statement because it only does the else statement if this is false, right? So that's important. So that's if and else. You'll use those every single day in programming, super important. There's also the else if statement. So we can come down here and the else if allows us to do another comparison. So right here, we're doing a comparison operation, right? We're saying, hey, is my name equal to John using our comparison operators? If we wanna do another one, we could say else if, and then set up another one. We could say if my 
name equals Bob. And then let's print this out again. <laughs> let's say, I love you, Bob. <laughs> I don't know. Right. So now we would bring this else statement back up here. Now let's look at this program flow. It starts out, hey, is your name John? Yes, it is. It prints this out and it stops. It does not then come down here and do this line. Anytime in a conditional statement, something evaluates to true, it stops right after whatever is in the curly brackets for that true statement. So this won't get executed or this won't get executed. It just stops. And we can confirm this. We can save this and run it. And it says, hello there, John, and the whole thing stops. On the other hand, if we change this to uh, Tim, again, it says, hey, is my name John? No, it's not. It's Tim. So it skips this bracket, drops down, and it goes to this one. It says, okay, well, in that case, is my name Bob? Well, no, it's not. It's Tim. So again, it skips whatever's in these brackets, and it drops down to the else statement, and then it prints out whatever's there. So here, if we save this, it's just going to say, hello, Tim, of course, and there you go. On the other hand, if this is Bob, then you're going to come back here and it says, I love you, Bob, <laughs> right? Because again, it starts at the top. It says, is my name John? No, it's not. It's Bob. So it skips these brackets right here. It drops down here and it does this one. Hey, is my name Bob? Well, yeah, it is. So then it prints this out and it stops, right? It does not continue down to the else statement because like I said, anytime one of these conditional statements, these comparison operations evaluates to true, it will just do whatever's in the next little set of brackets and then stop right after that. So very useful, very cool. And that's all there is to it. Now we use this equal to sign and strings. You could of course always use these other ones as well. So if you have numbers, you know, very important if you're doing all kinds of math, if you have a variable that's 10 and another one that's five and you say, Hey, is the second variable greater than 10? No, it's not. You know, so you do the same sort of logic here. So if we went, you know, my num equals one, let's do that, or even say 10. And let's just do it like this. What do you say? And then let's go my num two equals five. We could equally go if my num one is greater than my num two, then we could, well, let's just document right out to the screen here. We've done this in a couple of videos in the past. Here we can just print out greater, right? <laughs> Whatever. So if we save this and run it, it says greater. If these are equal, save this and run it, it's not going to print out anything because all we have is a, an if statement. We could do an else and then document right out uh, not greater, right? So if we save this and run it, it says now not greater because 10 is not greater than 10. They're equal to, right? So like I said, you could use strings, you can use numbers, you can use all the things in JavaScript, but conditional statements are just super important. You'll use them, like I said, every day. All coding always uses comparison operators and conditional statements. It's just a fundamental thing and super easy to do with JavaScript. So that's all for this video. If you liked, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Kodobi.com where you can use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off lifetime membership. So that's access to all my courses, over 60 courses, thousands of videos, and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 180,000 students learn to code just like you. My name is John Elder from Kodobi.com, and I'll see you in the next video.